Welcome back to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. We've enjoyed talking about movies. We like talking about learning. And we're going to go back to the seminary for more learning <laughs> uh, because there's another learning opportunity coming up in February at Concordia Seminary in St. Louis. Joining us today, the Reverend Dr. Mark Seifried. He's professor of exegetical theology at Concordia Seminary, and he'll be leading the Lay Bible Institute on Galatians in February. Dr. Seifried, thanks for being our guest on the Coffee Hour today. Glad to be with you. So Galatians, uh, a great letter. What do we know about the Galatians to whom Paul has written in this letter? Well, the main thing we know is that they are Gentile, Gentiles who've come to believe in Jesus and um, some Jewish Christian missionaries have come to Galatia urging them that uh, believing in Jesus is not enough, that you also have to become Jewish be circumcised, keep the law if you want to be saved. And Paul writes to address this sad situation. There's other questions about who they are, um, whether we're talking about churches that Paul planted on his first missionary journey in the south of Asia Minor, or uh, whether they're churches that Paul planted on his second missionary journey in the north, near present-day Ankara, and um, and I opt for the second. It's a minority, but it, it, um, view, but it's it's the right one, I think. Um, so they're <laughs> they're they're actually Celtic. They're Celtic tribes who had become completely Greek by this period, and and they're the ones to whom these Jewish uh, Christian minis- missionaries came. Is there anything unique about the letter to the Galatians? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> Well, we know that Luther loved the letter to the Galatians. He lectured on it twice, 1519 and then uh, 1535. Um, and he called it my Katie von Borja, his, his, the way, name of his wife, whom he loved. Um, and he loved it, I think, because of the sharpness and the directness with which Paul presents the gospel it's an emergency situation. Uh, this is a succinct letter and a pointed letter, and that sets it apart from the other letters of Paul. Mm. So we've talked about with the Galatians and how a little bit about how this letter was written, what's unique about it. What does this letter then to the Galatians mean for us today? Yeah, that's also a very good question, and um, I, I can go on on this one for a long time. Well, in in a fundamental way, it, it has the same message for us as it did for these um, Galatian churches and Christians in the first century, namely that our righteousness, that is, that by which we stand before God and will stand before God at the final judgment, our righteousness is not found in ourselves, but purely and entirely in Jesus Christ and in God's saving work in him. That, that translates from the first century to the 20th first century pretty easily. But there's some things that go with it in the context of the letter that also speak to our time in a particular way. Um, One of them is is the question of identity. Sometimes when I teach this letter, and I surely will do this on February 6th, um, I use um, Bonhoeffer's poem, uh, Who Am I? Poem or or just exalted prose. But Bonhoeffer is writing from his prison cell, and he's asking the question, who am I? Am I what others say about me? Or am I what I know of myself? Um, outwardly people say that I'm, um, I project confidence and strength and inwardly I find myself a weakling and grasping for straws and yearning to breathe and this sort of thing. And in the end of the poem, he says, but whatever I am, oh God, I'm yours. And that's sort of the dynamic in Galatians. Um, these Gentile Christians 
um, in the background of the letter, we know something like this must have happened. They've, they've broken with their culture. They've come to believe in Jesus. They're marked out as different. Um, we don't know whether they're of high status or low status. Paul doesn't really address this question directly, but we know that you know, simply becoming a Christian in a non-Christian culture is pretty dramatic. And it would be natural, it was natural, that the Galatian Christians asked themselves, who am I? Where do we belong? And then along come these um, Jewish Christian missionaries who suppose that they can improve on Paul's gospel. And they say, well, you know, your identity finally has to be that of a faithful Jew. You have to become circumcised and commit yourself to keeping the law. Um, so it's a question of identity and then a, a, of status. Um, um, where do I fit into society? And uh, that's one of the issues, this question of who, who am I? Not only young people ask this question, but older ones as well. And wh where's my status? Where do I receive recognition? Um, mm -hmm. Effectively, these Jewish Christian missionaries were saying, your status and your identity lies not only in what God says about you, but what God says about you corresponds to what we say about you, what other people say about you. And um, in a way, the message of Galatians uh, from Paul's side then is um, Gentile lives matter. They matter just as they are. You, just as you are, are important to God. And you can see that it has implications both for my personal identity and for the identity of this group of Christians, these Gentile Christians in the ancient world. And then uh, thirdly, um, we, we often um, divide the Christian life, so to speak, into being baptized in Jesus' name and believing in him and being justified before God, my standing before God, and then um, as a sort of second step, at least it can come across this way, um, my, my being sanctified, that's the usual term that we use, although it's not precisely how Paul uses the term, you know, that, that there's a sort of the second step in, um, that constitutes Christian living. But I've, I've already hinted at it a little bit in, in describing how Paul speaks of justification in Galatians. Paul speaks of our righteousness being outside of ourselves in Christ. And when we have Christ, we have the whole of him, and we're made new creatures. Paul's word in Galatians is, I've been crucified with Christ. I live, yet no longer I, but Christ lives in me. Now, that's grasped by faith, and our faith is either strong or weak, depending on the moment, depending on what's happening with us. But this seamless picture of the gospel um, leads to a seamless understanding of Christian living, that my standing before God and my living with Christ here and now are one piece for Paul. And we'll explore that on that Saturday when we, when we go through Galatians. So that's my little characterization of the message of Galatians for today. You're free to ask me anything about it you like. <laughs> How do we connect these themes that Paul talks about in Galatians to our contemporary issues uh, that we're dealing with in, in today's culture? Well, um, in two ways, at least. Um, the first one still applies the, for the being right before God frees me to not seek the approval of others but to serve them instead, to affirm myself in the proper sense, knowing that I am loved, that Christ died for me, even for me and for each one of us. And then um, that, as I suggested in the larger corporate sense, that I become aware of God's love for everyone. I should add this to what I, I just said about the message of Galatians. The fact that God sent the gospel to the Gentiles and that so many, many Gentiles believed in Jesus 
presented a challenge for the first Jewish Christians. Because before this happened, they believed in Jesus, and of course they lived as Jews. They kept the halakha, the standards of, by which one lived as a Jew. They observed the food laws, had Sabbath, of course, and, and all this sort of thing. But what wasn't clear then was where their faith finally rested. Did it rest in Jesus alone? Or was it Jesus plus um, all these hmm. practices that every Jew did? But once the Gentiles came in, once God did this with the Gentiles, um, suddenly this question had to be faced. And of course, these Jewish Christian missionaries who had made their way to Galatia were answering it in the wrong way. Uh, Paul gives the answer out of the gospel itself that it's Christ alone and not any other additions to it, which then has an impact on how we think of those who are different from us and come from a different culture, even within the U.S. Uh, it wasn't by accident that I said one of the messages of the letter is Gentile lives matter. Um, we see the world in, through a different lens if we hear it and see it through the gospel that God, Paul presents in Galatians. So much to learn in just this one letter, and uh, you want to learn more about it, you can join in the Lay Bible Institute on Galatians coming up February 6th. Uh, this one is unique, right, the, with the opportunity to participate online uh, rather than uh, it being in person. Is that right, Dr. Seifried? Yeah, yeah. The, the COVID situation has us online. That's correct. What else do we need to know about the Lay Bible Institute on Galatians uh, in February? Well, this is just part of this whole program of of making uh, of having sessions that are completely accessible to lay persons in language that they understand to empower them with the word for their own Christian living and for speaking the good news of Jesus Christ to others. That's what it's all about. Very good, very good. And you can find out more at the Concordia Seminary website, csl.edu, in the continuing education uh, column there. And we'll provide the links in the program notes as well today. Our guest, the Reverend Dr. Mark Seifried, professor of exegetical theology at Concordia Seminary in St. Louis, teaching the Lay Bible Institute on Galatians, February 6th. If you're interested in that, do you want to register soon so that you can get your spot? Thanks so much for being our guest today, Dr. Seifried. Glad to be with you. Thanks very much. You've been listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support The Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you. Anytime. Anywhere. Anywhere.